Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to discuss an interesting question. Um, is there an algebraic uh, sequence or function which can regularly produce prime numbers? And I'm talking about consistently, not, oh, it produced another prime number. No, I want it to produce a prime number every term. It doesn't have to produce every prime number, but I want it to regularly produce some prime. So first I'm going to um, tell you what a prime is, just to clear up any confusion. So a prime number is a number with exactly two integer factors, two whole number factors. One and itself. And it has to be an integer. Um, so those two factors can be anything as long as they're whole numbers. Uh, so, well, so, but, so that means that five, well, it, it's, it's a prime number, but just because, and just because 2.5 goes into it doesn't make it less prime because 2.5 is not a whole number, it's not an integer. So, um, for an example of a composite number, a number that's not prime, we'll use 8. So 8 has four factors. 1, 2, 4, and 8 itself. So that makes it not prime, because they are all integers. So, if you look... Oh, yeah, so if we have... Um, to, to show something to be prime is actually very hard. There's no um, way to do it algebraically. You just have to use a process of elimination. Where, but, and I'm going to show you that it's actually easier than it sounds. Because, well, where n is the prime number, you only have to search between the numbers 2 and the square root of n. Because there always has to be at least one factor between 2 and the square root of n that make a number non-prime. And the largest um, low factor of a number would be the square root of the number. And that would be multiplied by itself to give us that number. So uh, with that being said, let's jump into um, looking at uh, per, looking at possible functions. However, first I'm going to define Euclid's proof, which says that there's infinitely many primes. I'm going to touch on this in a later video, um, but just keep it in mind for now that that is what means that that's why there are infinitely many primes. That's what shows that there are infinitely many primes. So now I'm going to discuss types of functions. Um, first. There are linear functions, also known as arithmetic sequences, which um, they increase by a set amount each time. Um, the main difference is that uh, arithmetic functions have a set starting point, whereas linear functions do not. Uh, right now I'm listing a couple of, uh, I guess, arithmetic sequences. Uh, which are linear functions, but they're terminated on either side. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that increases 1 each time. 2, 3, 4, 5, it increases 1 again, but it can start anywhere. And 1, 3, 5, 7, so it can increase by 2 or 3 or 4 or whatever. It just has to increase by the same amount. However, this isn't useful because primes get farther and farther apart. It's another part of primes that each prime is farther away from the last. Um, so... Um, we have quadratic functions, um, also known as uh, geometric sequences. Uh, again, the main difference is, difference is that a geometric sequence has a set starting point, whereas a quadratic function does not. It uh, forms sort of a U, as opposed to forming a line that curves. Um, so the formula for a quadratic function is y equals ax plus bx plus c, where x and y are variable, and a, b, and c are all constant. So no matter what x and y are, a, b, and c will always be the same. So those, that's what a um, quadratic function looks like. Um, 
a geometric sequence would you, you just look like the thing to the right. Uh, it, it can look either way. It doesn't look like both. Um, it, um, one of them is with a negative A value and one is with a positive. So now we can begin looking for a function. Now, it would be a, a quadratic or arithmetic function. And if you look for long enough, you will find that this function is x squared minus x plus 41. Uh, x squared minus x will always produce a uh, even number for reason I'll discuss. And the 41, it's arbitrary, but it does work for some weird reason. It's not it's it's more random than anything else. And as you see, when you start producing numbers, it produces 41, 43, 47, 53, and then 61. Now, these numbers are, yes, it doesn't include the first primes, but it, all these numbers are prime. And that's really weird. Uh, but I'm just going to show you how this it shows that it's a geometric sequence. It goes 2, 4. The distance between them increases by 2 each time. Um which contrasts to an arithmetic sequence where it would remain the same the whole time. So, uh, the x squared minus x always produces an even number, and all primes are odd, except for 2, and this doesn't produce 2. And so when you add 41, it will always have an odd number, which is part of the reason that it's prime. Um, another part of the reason that uh, x squared minus x plus 41 uh, it, it, it that there's no real other reason. It just it just works, and so I'm going to write out the first few uh, numbers it produces and compare it to primes. So here we are. Um, the numbers in bronze are prime numbers produced by the series, um, and the ones in black are prime numbers not produced by the series. You can see that the distance gets farther and farther apart each time which is very interesting. Um, and you can see, yeah, the first four are all the same, whereas later on there's more and more... The first four are uh, prime numbers in a sequence, and then they get more and more spread out over time. Uh, I'm going to get back to that in a little while, but for now I'm going to show you an exception to the rule. And this exception um, is, is sort of strange. It's the number... It's, one, it's 1681 which is the 41st term of the sequence, and most people wouldn't carry it out this far, but once you do, it becomes obvious why this is a um, non-prime, because it has three, uh, three numbers go into it, 141 and 168, it, 1681. Uh, 41 is the square root of it, and this would sort of make sense when you think about it, because you're going to be squaring 41 as your uh, first value is going to be 41, so you're going to square it, and then you're going to add, then you're going to subtract 41, because that's your second value, and then you're going to add 41, and what you get there is the plus 41 and the minus 41, they cancel, um, and you're left with just 41 squared, which is not a prime number. Uh, there is also exceptions. There's an exception every 45th number, basically. So 41 is an exception, 82 is an exception, and so on. Um, it, which is actually quite interesting. Uh, but it, they'll all have the factor of 41, which means that they can't be prime. So, um, now I'm going to um, get back to the distances between them which is actually a very, very interesting uh, part of this. And it's, it sort of, it, it, it follows a pattern. I'm not sure if that pattern continues very far, but the pattern is interesting to see. So, the first distance is 1, and then there's one that's created by the series, and then there's one that's not, and then there's one created, and then there's two that are not, and then there's one created, and then there's one that's not, and then there's one created, and then there's... 4 is not. So it goes 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, and then I'm not sure if it would go to 8, but it's an interesting thing to possibly to look at in the future. Uh, by the way, this list is, uh, I got it from Wikipedia, uh, which I'm 
citing in my sources down below. So, um, why don't we care? Uh, this is not especially new, and so why haven't we used this to discover new primes? There's tons of money, there's large prizes, things like that for people who discover the next prime, or especially people who discover a uh, some sort of pattern to prime numbers. And, well, this is all going on, we have this sequence, right? Um, there's two reasons why we don't. For one thing, this sequence is not really proven to exist. There's the exception of 41. There's the exception of 41 times 2. There's the for exception of 41 squared. There's quite a few exceptions, and we don't know if all the exceptions follow this pattern. So, for one thing, it can't really be trusted. We'd still have to test. Um, but then you would say, well, it could be a starting point. Well, our second uh, thing means that it's not really even useful for that, which is really a shame. But the, our second thing is that we want them in order. We want to know, okay, this prime comes after this prime, or this prime is the whatever prime. So, yes, it's sort of fun, but it doesn't tell us either of those things, which are both quite useful. Um, so, we don't we don't really need them. We, this formula is interesting, definitely, but both from a mathematician's point of view and from a industry's point of view, we don't see, it's not that important. And uh, I'm going to discuss why primes are important to industries later, but for now, thanks for watching.